Okay, I'm going to talk about using the uh, the Faber Castell markers with the with the India ink being permanent and waterproof. Okay, that's very different than their Albrecht Dürer watercolor felt tips, which are a watercolor in a felt tip. But the important thing is that they're all Faber Castell, the German art pigment company that came up with the ability to put India ink into felt tips. What makes India ink different than the, the inks that are in regular felt tips? One, it's the, the colors are permanent, and two, light fast, and two, one of the big big things is that they're, because the breakthrough was that they were able to get the India ink come, come through the felt, the brush, and, and get down to a six zero point. So here we're looking at just as this is a simple one that I'm not going to color in. I've just decided to leave it as a graphic. And I would use like this yellow, for example, would go would go on top. But what I'm going to show you is what happens here. And this is a white white paper. This is a this is a hundred percent acid free watercolor cold press paper or hot press paper. I mean it's we'll look at some of these. Again, like I've been doing, the negative space is all the white. Again, this is all felt tip in the Indian ink, the blacks, everything. Sometimes I go over a darker areas and I get a, a more moody type color. Or I, I, or I can play with earth colors. In other words, everything I can do in watercolor, with the exception of the of the bleeding, I can do with this combination. But it gives it something else. It gives it a tightness and a flatness that's different for me. That gives me something different to challenge my, my view and to challenge the colors that I use. And then you go to the bright. So I can have a wide range of colors just out of the 30 colors that's in this, these sets 
from Faber Castell. Sometimes I decide on a small, some smaller ones just to make colored note and leave the rest with the, the black and the gray. This is important for me to be able to do it. So I'm just doing it on these small ones first. Then I'll try some on the on larger ones. If I'm looking for texture, I could have all the texture down and then color over the texture. And that's what I'll be showing you in a few minutes here. To understand, these are the ones that I've talked about before, but I do them over at the deli with a, a pad of watercolor paper. So it'll give me a shadow, a dark shadow, on this warm gray. When I put the color over it, it'll come out slightly grayed. Here's another one where I just use a little, a few of the color. And these are got, these come from the very small point pens. This is a brush for this part here. And then this is, which one is, this is a six. This is a six times zero. Or no, three times zero on this one, I'm sorry. But it, I have them up to six. Six is about as far as they can go now with the India ink. Okay, let's go over here to the stacks of these drawings. And I want a black, black but I want that gray in there, that warm gray coming around. Very important when using the felt tips is to understand warm grays and cool grays. When, the, when you have color going on top, it makes for a different shadow completely. I'm gonna take a color that would be thought of as being very opaque it's, it's a kind of yellow-orange, and that's the fine point, and this is the, the brush point. Because it's in the ink, and that's when I want that dark to come through, that, that orange to coming through a dark. So that gives me that, and I'm going to come into here. Slightly lighter, but still closer to the piece over there. Okay, this is kind of a chartreuse yellow. Yeah. 
I could come back into this and create a little more shadow when I put the color over another color many times I'm creating a shadow in the process let's take a, a bright blue balance it I'm highlighting with the blue up a little bit. I may not fill all the color. I may just like leaving this sort of thing happening. I'm going to come and use a bright green. This is a reddish, the reddest red that they can make in these uh, the kind of felt tips. And it pops a little bit. And I can because it pops, I can go over the blacks real easy and pick up a different. Okay, I'm going to use a yellow, yellow for, I'm going to use the small point. Just so it's barely showing. I'm, I'm not putting the, the, the big point on it. I'm using this little point just to create a it's a different and I'm going back and forth with it And I'll leave some of those whites there to pick it up. I may come back into here. 
Come into the red. Go into the green. Okay, that's the idea. I could take it farther, I could leave it, but I'll sit with it just to see what those whites are doing. It's the whites that are making it be different. Pipe picking up. We want to, we want to always give yourself time just looking at the work. And you just because you think it's finished, it's maybe not finished. So remember that. Artwork has a time of its own. It's very easy to say, well, oh, I got what I wanted. Okay, do you want to leave that? Or do you want to go take it farther? And if you're going to take it farther, you're going to have to take chances with it. And if you're going to take chances with it, then you're going to have to also study it. So take the time to look. Look at and, and get in a conversation with the piece. The piece is going to tell you what's happening, what it needs. And it may take quite a while, or it may happen in a minute and a half. We don't know. But whatever, it's got to tell us. So what we're looking at is the importance of the black line, but not as obvious all the time as it is in some of my more direct ones like this. Take the time to listen to the work. Painting doesn't take a lot of time. Listening to the painting does. So, for those of you that want to try this, pagienza, patience. Patience of, not patience painting, patience looking. Thank you. Thank you.